how do you guys like uh, accompany people who are time blindness, who have time blindness? Howdy do, ladies and gentlemen. Wednesday, October 23rd. I feel like I could probably figure that out. I always forget to name the, or announce the date. August 23rd. I just got back from taking my five-year-old to the dentist. I don't know if I'm just a bad dad or what, but uh, kid's going to have to have two teeth removed, the back ones, upper upper back ones, and she also has two additional cavities, and then they got to add spacers in. Anyways, they got to do all kinds of crap. So that sounds fun for her. That's been my day so far, taking the kid to the dentist to get a bunch of bad news. If you guys are watching this, you guys like my new studio? New-ish. I just kind of update a little bit. I got some nice, beautiful wood paneling. It's not real. Also finished painting the black over here. If you guys remember, this one used to be all white. It used to just be like black and then black on the ceiling. But now it looks kind of semi-professional. I don't know if you guys could see. Can you guys see the... I just had a uh, peanut butter with grilled chicken sandwich. That's how I roll. Get the flavor, get the protein. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's sitting. Nice little mess right there. And my hair is just, my hair is on point right now too. This is what it looks like. This is called, everybody was like, what do you do to your hair? I was like, freaking sleep on it. It's what I do. So yeah, rocking a new studio. Hope you like it. I like it. Looks kind of nice. I did not measure correctly when I ordered this uh, wallpaper stuff. So it's incomplete at the bottom. And like, it kind of cuts off like here. <laughs> And then this way is just paint. But hey, Hollywood, special effects. Looking nice. Uh, I'm also reading a new book. Hey, hey uh, breaking news. This may or may not be a surprise <laughs> to some of you. I have never read a book from start to finish. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I should have should kept that to myself. I've never read a book from start to finish. Okay, I've listened to I've listened to books, but I think that's that's like cheating. I don't think I've that's not, oh man, you know what? I don't know if I've I don't know if I talked about this last episode or not. I apologize if I have, but if I have and you've already heard it, just skip ahead. Um yeah, I started reading a book called uh let's see, I have a read oh, People's History of the United States. I'm uh I do love history. A uh, big big history buff. And uh, ironically, our babysitter is a history major, and this is a book that she recommended. And then I have another friend who's a big history buff who also recommended this book. So we'll see how it goes. So far, so good. Um, I do enjoy more listening to uh, like the audible audible books or you know like books on tape, but um, there's a couple reasons why I'm, I'm trying to read it. For one, I'm trying to expand my vocabulary because my vocabulary sucks. Uh, like I hear, I'll hear, I'll hear big words and I know what they are, but man, for some reason this doesn't like, it does not register to the dome for my memory bank to then use it, uh, later down the road for my, uh, for my benefit. So I'm thinking two reasons. One, I hope if I'm starting to read it and like I visualize it and see it, that I'll retain it better. And two, not that I'm old. But I'm getting older, and I start to think about, like, you know, like Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that. Part of the reason. Uh, anyways, I started thinking about that. And I, um, I've i read where, you know, if you, like, you know, you kind of need to train your mind, you know, like exercise your mind, mental mental uh, exercising your mind, your brain, do some things new. Like, you hear people say, like, oh, if you always take the the same route to work all the time. It's almost like just muscle memory. You don't even like, you're not really even thinking because you just know I'm going to turn left here. I'm going to go straight here, but turn right. So like they say every now and then you should just try like a new route to work just to like, you know, activate your brain differently. If you just get into too much of a routine where you're just like always doing the same stuff, like your brain kind of just goes into auto mode. So uh, I'm not a big reader. I do not like reading. I think it's kind of boring. I also lack the ability to focus. I swear to God, I'll read like two pages and I'll be like, I don't, totally forgot that I was even reading. I'm like thinking about something else. So then I have to go back and reread. 
so I hate reading. So I'm really like really forcing myself into reading because I'm like I said, I'm trying to be a, trying to trying to become smarter, more gooder at words. Plus, uh, you know, I just want I, I like I like learning about history and stuff like that. So we'll see. So it goes. People's history of the United States. I'm curious if any of you have read that and what you think about it. And uh, I keep hearing good stuff. It's kind of like depressing so far. Because like chapter one's like, here's how we effed over the Native Americans. <laughs> Just like all the cruel shit. So it's like, it's interesting, but also kind of a doubter. But anyway. Um, I was also looking or reading a lot about this writer's strike slash Hollywood strike that's going on. You know, I'm pro, I'm pro writer here. I'm pro creative. However, I'm also a realist. You guys are kind of fucked. Not, I, I hate to be the bad one to say it to you. I mean, I hope you know this because like AI is legit. AI is freaking amazing. Uh, and you know, these movie companies, they're going to do what's going to be best for them financially. And so it's like, I feel like they're just prolonging the inevitable, inevitable. Like it's gonna, it's gonna happen because the AI is just too good. Like, I don't know if you guys saw the, if you guys get on YouTube and look up a uh, South Park AI episode. I don't know if it's the actual guys like Trey and, uh, Trey and, uh, the other guy's name, the creators of South Park. I don't know if they did it. Maybe I could just be like a fan who did it. But there's a South Park episode that was all AI. Talking about like even the graphics, the storyline, the jokes, the production, the editing. Everything was AI. Everything was just coded in. And it came out pretty freaking good. Like it wasn't like the greatest South Park episode. But like, okay, like on a scale of like 1 to 10. As far as like 10 being like peak uh, greatness of South Park, it was probably like an eight and a half to a nine. It was a pretty good freaking episode. And dude, it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. Like AI is still so freaking new. Like two years from now, how amazing is AI going to be like two years from now? Like five years from now? Oh my God. AI is going to be phenomenal. And so... I mean, I feel bad. And I feel bad even saying it, but I think that the writers are kind of screwed. Like, I don't really know what... I mean, if you're looking just for... From a... If you're just, if you're taking it... If you're looking at it just from, like, a business standpoint, where, like, oh, how can I get the most bang for my buck? How can I get the best ROI on my investment? Dude, the AI is, like... I don't know how you're going to compete with that. I think it's kind of creepy slash weird. Like, I think a, some studios were asking to you know, like background act actors to like scan their faces and stuff and then they can own their likeness for the rest of their lives. Like, that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Like, I don't even know why you'd have to even... Honestly, I don't even know why you have to do that now I'm saying it out loud and why you'd have to do that because I think you could just tell AI, hey, generate me a, a guy, a person, you know, and then it'd just do it. So I don't know why they have to have actual... I don't know. Kind of weird. Um, Yeah, so I don't think it looks too good for them. Uh, but yeah, just go check out that freaking, go check out that South Park episode. You're just going to blow your freaking mind. It's like, un, it's, it's unreal how great it is. Can't get away from effing T. Swizzle, a.k.a. Tay Tay, a.k.a. Taylor Swift. Holy Messiah, people. Swifties. Holy moly. Goodness Lord. The Swifty fandom is like next level, man. It's somewhat of a kind of a pivot side note. Is there any way? Like, here's a, here's a question. Feel free to like, I don't know. However you want to answer my question, comment or DM me or whatever. Is there a way to criticize someone, something, without sounding like a hater or without sounding like a negative Nancy? Like, seriously, is there a way to like? I don't I don't know. I feel like as soon as you start like going down that road of like criticizing or being kind of like negative on, on anything, you're probably going to be viewed as a hater. And so it's weird like I can't it's, I don't really know how to how to toe that line. Um 
Because I am not a Tay-Tay. I am not a Tay-Tay hater. I think she is a sweet... I've said this before on, on different podcasts. I think she's like a sweet, sweet lady. And all the stuff that I see her do with her fans, freaking awesome. She's awesome to her fans. Uh, I think she's got some good songs. I think she's got a couple of great songs. Um... I'm trying to I'm trying to preface all this with good stuff because I want to come I want to come in with some with some negativity. Uh, what else? Very pretty. She's a very pretty lady. She's puts on a phenomenal show. Um, uh, yeah, she's cool. I I like. I think she's. I think she's very. I think she's very very good as a musician. All right, here we go. Now it's my negative shit. Uh, kind of overrated, guys. Little overrated. <laughs> Tay Tay, I mean, here's the because here here's where I like, this is where I get my feathers feathers in a ruffle. I always hear about her um, songwriting ability, and I'm like, oh she you know everybody says like oh she writes her own song she writes her own song okay that's cool, but like a lot of her songs aren't that great guys like lyric lyric wise you know like I would say the majority of them are not like whoa. She wrote that? Wow. Now she's got some. Definitely has some. But to be like, oh, she writes her own music. Okay, well, that's also like equally uh, uh, in her, in like not in her favor because there's some stinkers on there, some colossal stinkers. Um, Without going on and on and on, I just think just a little overhyped. Just a smidge, guys. Just a smidge. I've seen the video, all the TikToks. People are driving like 12 hours to sit outside the arena to listen to her freaking performance. Do, have you guys ever been a fan of anything that, that big? Like, or is that the way I say that? Have you ever been a fan of anything or anyone like that much to, to go to those legs? I just, that's like mind blowing. And I heard Andrew Schultz, the comedian, which I'm a big fan of, by the way. I love that guy. He was compared her to Michael Jackson. Can't do that. You, can, you just can't do that to Tay Tay. MJ is from like another planet. Dude is from another planet. I feel like the people who are old like me, who experienced peak MJ, man, it was like nothing. It was like nothing I've ever I've ever seen or have seen since then. And he's in like on a global scale. I feel like I know Tay Tay's got fans globally but i feel like she's big time in uh you know in the states in america mj was like just freaking he's the king of pop okay the guy's the king of pop you don't just get you don't just throw that nickname around lightly um so i'll just say people who are older old as me know or or older and remember peak mj is no comparison if mj was on a 10 I would say Tay Tay, even though, okay, just think of how crazy and amazing Tay Tay is. Okay, that's like a six, okay, on the level of MJ. So just just keep that in your mind when you're like looking at all this crazy stuff going on with Taylor Swift. Just know MJ was like, and there was like not even social media back. Imagine if there was social media about, around when MJ was peak MJ. Oh my God. Unreal. Um, So yeah, I know it probably comes off as like I'm a Tay Tay hater. I just like, it's just, uh, I guess, as the kids say, kind of cringe sometimes to see. And I, I don't, I really don't want to hate on people having fun. Like, go have fun, right? Go have fun. Just dial it down a little bit. You know, she's just a person. Okay. I don't think I saw the the uh, video of her. Like, she went to go eat at a restaurant, I think, in New Jersey or something like that. Dear Lord, I think there was like 5,000 people outside the restaurant. It's like, guys. Ironically, you know, it's funny if you're like, Listen, I know T Taylor loves her fans, but in that scenario, I bet you she'd have been more thankful if you guys stayed away. If you guys stayed away when she was eating at the restaurant, she probably would have been, you probably would have been doing her a favor rather than showing up and bombarding her. It's just weird. It's a, it's just a crazy, crazy, uh, a crazy craze that I just am having a hard time comprehend, comprehending. Because, uh, like I said, I think she's great. I think she's an excellent pop artist. I just don't know. Like, I just, I, I'm not seeing what everybody else is seeing as far as putting her like on this pedestal of like greatness. I'm having a hard time. Maybe I'm wrong. Change my mind. 
Speaking of changing my mind, I changed my mind on the Snow White lady. Gosh dang it, Rachel Zegler. A couple episodes ago, I had her back. I was like, she's awesome. I, like, I think she's a good Snow White. I thought she's going to be good. But dear Lord, lady, just freaking digging a hole. Just digging herself a hole. Man, I've never heard anybody poo-poo on a show or a movie that they're redoing in my life. That lady, like, she's playing Snow White. And I swear to God, I've never heard her say anything good about the, the original Snow White. It's just all negative Nancy about everything. She's almost like, she's almost making a case like, don't go and watch this movie we're making. It's like, sure, her uh, her PR freaking tour has been a S show. Um, I don't know. I don't really have any hot takes that nobody else hasn't already said. Like same thing. You know, if you're gonna remake a movie, you're gonna change everything. Don't call it Snow White. Okay, I'm a big I'm a big believer in that. And if you are going to remake a movie, stick to the original story because obviously it's amazing. Like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. I, th I saw a comparison, too, about, like, Coca-Cola or, like, Nike. Like, Coca-Cola. It's been around forever. People love it. You think they want a new? People want new Coca-Cola? No, people don't want new Coca-Cola. They want original Coca-Cola, just like the freaking Snow White. They don't want new Snow White. They want the original Snow White story. All these Disney movies. You know all these Disney movies? Uh, hey, Disney. I know, I know Disney's listening. Hey, Disney. You know all these movies that kicked colossal ass for you and made you billions of dollars? Uh, maybe we like those stories, fuckface. God. Now you're going to change the stories? Oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And say with the Nike, that, uh, the comparison was Nike, like, changing the swoosh logo. Oh, that'd be, a, that'd be a great idea. Do that, Nike. Change out the swoosh. We want something new. Shove the head. Pull the head out of your ass. So, anywho, Rachel Zegler. I was a fan... Not so much anymore. Kind of not not cool with the... And I'll spare you all the, the rant of Disney effing up. Like, come on, guys. How many times are you guys going to do this? How many times is Disney going to do this? Remake a movie and eff it up. We like the original story, people. Gosh. And also, to that point, you can make new movies and new stories. I'm all for that, too. Do that. Just don't do that. Just don't remake an old story completely different, but then keep the same name. That sounds, I don't know, fucking stupid. Okay. Will I watch Snow White? Probably, because I have two little girls, and they're going to want to go see the shit out of that movie. So it's like, all right, I'm probably going to still go watch it and give Disney a bunch of my money, because I'm a sucker. I'm a gosh dang sucker. Oh, hey, guys, Lizzo's a piece of shit. Am I right? the hell Lizzo she guys I'm uh, assuming most of you have heard the story right she's taken her dancers who are guests are also kind of like overweight and she is also fat shaming them but that's that's not that big deal that's not that big a deal fat shaming's part here's the big deal they're taking her to they're taking her, or she is taking them to strip clubs shoving bananas in other females yoo-hoos and then forcing her dancers to eat the bananas out of the stripper's vagina. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, that's some next level douchebaggery, Lizzo. <sighs> man, you know it's weird. I just I'm uh, like she's got some bangers I like. There's just okay. Separate the the person from the artist. She's definitely got some some hits that I definitely dig. I like those too. Now as a person, she just seems like a big bag of doo doo. She does. She just seems like a big bag of doo-doo. Every time I've heard her in interviews, every time I hear her talking, just not, not cool. She's just not a cool lady. And I don't, okay, here, I'm going to get on my high horse for a second. I don't care if you're overweight or if you're skinny. I don't give a shit about that. Here's what I care. Her and anybody else, if you're trying to make obesity, people who are overweight, like a role model or like some type of ex an acceptance where it's like it's okay to do that or be like that that's where I got a problem that's where I got a freaking problem because I don't really look at it as like fat or skinny I look at it as healthy or not healthy right I'm and I know a lot of you guys are crossfitters so I'm preaching to the choir but you can't look at some, anybody who's practical and rational looks at someone like Lizzo and knows that she is living an unhealthy lifestyle it's pretty apparent there's nothing like I don't I have I do not feel bad say that at all. 
If you're obese and you think that's okay, it's not okay. Duh, right? I like it's a no-brainer. And I don't like setting that example as like, oh yeah, everything's okay. You don't have to worry about it. everybody needs to be accepted. There, yeah, there's a level of that that I agree with. But there's also like you shouldn't be, this is what you should be striving for. You should be striving for healthy and longevity and feeling good. Because when you're healthier, you live a better life. And if you're living a better life, you're happier. And if you're happier, people around you are happier. And life's better to live. And you don't have to freaking, like when I go to, I go to Disneyland all the time. You guys, I t- you know, you guys know this. And then all the time I see people who are very overweight. They can't walk very far. They're huffing and puffing. They're str- They're on the struggle bus. Either they're, and there could be like, you know, if it's a hot day, they're extra sweaty. You know, I'm sure they're chafing, all that shit. And it's like, it's just not cool to say like, oh yeah, that's okay. It's okay to be that way. It's not okay to be that way. It's not okay. Like you're not, you're not less of a person or anything like that. Like, so don't, don't mix up my words, but we should know everybody's goal, everybody's goal, everybody. And I'm talking, I'm just keep saying it because I want to be very clear. Everybody goal should be to be healthy, want to be healthy, be at a healthy weight, eat a healthy, healthy diet, exercise. Like this is not, this should not be controversial at all. Like at all. So anyways, I don't know how I got down that road because Lizzo's a freaking banana shoving up the vagina dancer eating <laughs> stripper face. I don't know. Um, Yeah. But that I, I read that story and I was like, wow, that's a new one. Shoving a banana up a vagina and making your dancers eat it. Then fat shaming them too? Lizzo's fat shaming them? Come on, Lizzo. I mean, props to you to have like, there's no shame in your game. No shame in your game. So uh, she's going to get canceled, right? I don't know. She probably won't. They'll probably have like, I, mean, I haven't really followed up too much on that story. They probably already has like, or PR person, whatever. Hey, remember when Adele? Uh, the reason it's coming to mind because I know a lot of like people who are overweight use like Lizzo as like, oh, she's like my, you know, power power to Lizzo. But the same community. Remember when Adele was, whatever. She was a little. She was overweight, I guess. You know, she was overweight. Some it wasn't wasn't as much as Lizzo. But remember when she lost all that weight and then ever all the the AKA fat community was like ripping her a new one because like they said like you're you're like uh you're uh not selling out but like you're bringing you know the basically like they thought she was one of us and now she's not so now they're all mad at her because she lost weight god damn it people can you just not be dumb just don't be dumb okay just be practical and don't be dumb. That's so much to ask for. Yeah, I just remember that. I remember Adele getting attacked by like the overweight community because she lost weight. <laughs> she lost weight, got healthier. And apparently that's a bad thing. Unreal, guys. Unreal. Uh, speaking of unreal, here's a new one for you. And you know what? When I first read it, I was like, you got to be kidding me. But, you know, I think I'm kind of coming around. I'm kind of coming around to it. I think I'm going to use this. This lady on TikTok said that she went in for a job interview and she asked the the person interviewing her, how do you guys, um, how do you guys like uh, accompany people who are time blindness, who have time blindness? And the guy's like, what the shit are you talking about? And she's all, you know, people who are time blindness, you know, it's an actual thing. People that lose track of time or time goes by faster than normal for a, for them as compared to other people. And the guy's like, well, lady, I don't know what the shit you're talking about <laughs> because I've never heard of that before. Apparently I read, uh, I started going through this lady's comments on her video. I guess a lot of people have it. I guess it's a thing. Time blindness. And then other people are commenting, hey, I wish we had a device in our pocket that we could set alarms <laughs> and remind us of the time. Uh... But like I said, I'm kind of coming around on it because what a beautiful fucking move that's going to be. Listen, I go to I go to the 7 a.m. class a lot, CrossFit, but it's really like 7.14 for yours truly. So I'm going to drop the old time blindness on Coachy Poo and be like, listen, fuckhead, uh, 
class starts when uh, moi shows up because I got time blindness. So if uh, if I'm here at seven fourteen or seven twenty nine, you got to hold your hold your hold your shoes, buddy, because I'm a I'm here to work out. I got time blindness. So again, next time you guys are late or uh, you know just forget whatever, just drop the old time blindness on them. You'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. Don't you dare order black coffee unless you want to be a racist. <laughs> I love <laughs> there's these TikTok trends going around where they said, oh, dang, you'd see the new racism just dropped. <laughs> there's a new racism that just dropped. You can't order your coffee black. I mean, God, God only knows what you're trying to imply when you order your coffee black. Uh, which I would say, what about a white mocha? Can I order a white mocha? And then am I going to, is the bar barista's brain going to explode if I drop a white mocha on him? Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm going to read this tweet. And it, it's, I don't even know if this tweet's real. Like, I want it to be real. Like, I want this person to be serious. I can't tell if they're being serious or if they're just effing with us. But I kind of want it to be real because it's amazing. So one lady tweets, If your coffee order is more than three words, you're a racist. You have no wiggle room, period. I mean, you can't argue that. Those are That's, that's got to be some type of TikTok scientist report right there. Which this guy replies, and he's like on her side. He says, ordering coffee is racist, period. You adding milk and froth to black coffee is a symbolic representation of colonization, of hatred of dark skin, and needing to lighten it. Even black coffee involves dil diluting the coffee, another racist trope. You have no wiggle room. You guys think that's real? God, I hope that's real. Dude, that's some next level, right? Ah. I like black coffee. And I like sometimes putting a little bit of cream in my coffee. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> when I read stuff like this, I'm always like, are all our other problems taken care of? We have nothing else to worry about, right? We've, we've knocked them all off, and now we're down to... Let's not order. Let's not order black coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys. Let me give you some context about my upbringing. So just so you know that there's people like me who exist in this world, because I feel like it's never really talked about. I grew up in a small little town of like seven thousand people. Very tiny, very very tiny, and and I'm not exaggerating. I went to my one, our, our elementary school was K through eighth, just one school. And all nine of those years, one black person at our school, Terrell, one black person. And we also had like maybe like 15, 20 Mexicans, maybe. It was 99% white people that went to the school. And the town that I lived in was 99% white. Never, and I and I mean li literally, never did I ever think or view Terrell in any different way. I never even thought anything of it. I just thought he was like another kid. I never even like registered. Never once. I never thought anything about the color of his skin. I never just never even, that wasn't even something that entered my mind. And then I remember also like learning about slavery in school. I'm like. I couldn't process that either. I was like, what, what, how, why are they doing this again? Like, how come this is happening? Just because their skin color? Like, I couldn't even fathom, I couldn't even fathom that as a reason to like or not like somebody. I just couldn't understand. And, and, and even to that day, I still, <clears throat> I'm aware of it now that that's a thing, but I still don't like understand how people think like that. Anywho, I say all that because that's where I come from, right? I come from like an all-white town, an all-white school, and I don't, 
I am very confidently say I don't have a racist bone in my freaking body whatsoever. So when I see stories like this, I just like, I'm like, huh? What the hell's going on? Black coffee is racist? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, it just, man, my head hurts. My head hurts. And I, I just want to, I just want to have this, like, this gif on a loop. The freaking Zoolander, Mugatu, fucking, am I taking crazy pills? Like, that's like the, that little meme or gif is like, I can e easily use that 20 times a day. Um, yeah, I just want to let you know, that's how I grew up. I grew up all white. Zero racist bone in my body. Zero. Can you can you comprehend it? So I just want yeah. The reason why I just say that is because like just to let you know there's people like me in the world that exist and and it's just funny how everything's always especially nowadays, man. The divide, right? The freaking divide in this country. Skin color. The uh, pol political party. It's like I don't believe them. Are we, are we ever going to come together? Are we ever going to be kumbaya with one another? Man. Nothing too. I always ask a lot of my friends. So I'm like, do you guys, do you guys know anybody who's like racist? Because I think racist, right? I think people don't like someone based on their skin color. I mean, I mean, there's more. There's more things to that, but that, just that part right there. Do you guys know anybody who does not like somebody strictly based on their their race or their ethnicity? I literally know nobody. <clears throat> nobody in my circle of friends. I don't know anybody. So it's just weird how like that's such a a dominating uh, narrative. So I'm like, who's who? Where are all these racist people at? I don't know anybody. I'm not saying they don't exist. I know they do exist, but I like just a little skeptical on the amount. I just don't know if it's as I'm pushing back. I don't think it's as much as like the media always says there is. Anywho, so um, I'm gonna bounce out of here on like on a. Uh, on a therapy session. I'm gonna try to keep ooh, I'm like right at like 30 minutes. I'm trying to keep it trying to keep these episodes a little tighter. A little tighter for your uh for your little eardrums. Let me tell you why I'm a weird kid. And let me tell you why I'm again, I'm like I'm using the show. I'm always gonna try to drop a little nugget of my up upbringing when I was a kid, and then you guys could all know why I'm so fucked. I'm such a weird guy. So and maybe you guys don't not think this is a big deal, but it's like Oh, well, hopefully I can paint a clear enough picture where it's like, what the hell is this kid thinking? <clears throat> so I started popping my knuckles, you know. Ooh, there's a good one. Popping my knuckles. Probably like fourth or fifth grade. And when my mom, when I first did it in front of my mom, my mom's like, what the hell are you doing? She's like, don't pop your knuckles. It's going to give you arthritis. You can't pop your knuckles. And I just remember her making me like, making me feel bad. And then I also didn't want to like disappoint her anymore. So I used to go like days in a row, or like every day I'd go to school. I'd write, I would tally, I'd track down, track down, track, write down the number of times I would pop my knuckles in school. And then like I'd bring home and report back to my mom, hey mom, I only popped my knuckles like 12 times today. And she'd be like, oh, okay, that's, okay, that's good. You need to like, you know, you shouldn't be popping them at all, like zero, right? But what's, what's, I, I, this is like a random, I can't believe I remember this, by the way. I just had, had this thought last week, so I wrote it down. But the thing that was weird to me is that I remember very vividly how much I would be focusing on that every day at school. Like, it was like my top priority. Like, I need to make sure I'm not popping my knuckles. But it turned into like such a habit, you know? Like, sometimes I just wouldn't even, literally would not be thinking, is pop my knuckles. And I remember when I pop them, I'd get like a pit in my stomach. And I'd be like, gosh, dang, you got a freaking, I got to mark that down. Because also, also I'm not going to lie to my mom about how many times I pop a knuckle so I'd have to jot it down. And I just remember feeling like so guilty all the time and so bad and then I'd go home and tell my mom and she'd just kind of be like, she wouldn't really make make sense, you know, I wouldn't really say much about it but she'd just keep saying like, you need to stop doing that. And but I look, now that I'm older, I look back, I'd be like, man, like I think if I'm in that situation, like if I'm roles reversed, I'm a parent in that situation, I would probably put a little more effort into like asking, geez, did you, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd pry, pry a little bit more. Like, were you doing that all day? Were you tracking it? Like, are you really feeling like that bad about it? Like, you don't need to feel that bad about it. You know, like kind of comforting or like, reassure. Because like, it would, it'd be like days in a row. Like I'd come home the next day, you know? Mom, I popped him like 14 times. I fucking effed up. I had a, had a bad day. Had a bad day, Bob. I had a, had a real bad day. And then I come home. Hey, Dad, Bob, I only did it like six times. She's like, you shouldn't be doing it at all. Like no praise, you know? Like I was like on this weird, pointless, 
fucking psychological roller coaster about popping my knuckles. And that, that shit went on for like, I, I know months. I know it went on for months. It's just a weird thing that like, I know I did as a kid. I didn't really know any better, but it's like the, uh, I guess my, where I guess I have some anger toward my mom about that because of what I just said. Like, there's no like, she didn't try to comfort me. She didn't try to like, tell me it was okay or don't worry about it as much. Or, like, stop, you know, you shouldn't be focusing on that much. And if you can, you know, I think you can just don't pop your knuckles. So, I don't know what that says about me, but that's just another little, that little, little insight to my life of me as a young kid doing some weird shit, guys, doing some weird shit. I'll continue sharing weird shit about me. I'm, I got all these little weird things. It's funny that the stuff that I remember, that's this, I was, uh, I was pooping a couple the other day ago and I just remember that. I was like, holy crap, I totally forgot about that. I need to block it out of my mind. Uh, that's today's show. Thanks, guys, for listening. I always appreciate it. Oh, I'm just going to uh, graciously throw it out there. I, I I did it. I went ahead and added the subscription thing to the Instagram. There's a lot of back and forth. I didn't want to do it. I was thinking about not doing it, but I was like, you know what? There's there's some there's some ideas I want to do. I want to try experimenting different types of content and stuff. Anyways, you'll see it. If you guys are interested, you know how, much, how grateful I would be of, uh, of you guys supporting my shenanigans. Uh, and I promise I'll make it worth your while. Also, if you go ahead and sign up for that shenanigans. Uh, next week on the podcast, I got Rory McCurden. And, uh, gosh dang it, I feel like a douche. What's the other guy? What's the other guy's name? It's the Wall Street weightlifter guy. Gee, I should probably remember his name before I start talking to him. Huh? Anyways, the guy who has the Instagram handle, Wall Street Weightlifter, he's hopping on the show. And then this Saturday, I'm uh, I'm back on uh, Savon Podcast. Shoot the poop. People, I love you. Long time. You guys are rad. Feel free to yeah, comment on some of the stuff that I was asking you guys questions. I'm really curious about some of the stuff. Like, legit want to know, is there a way to criticize or be, you know, critique someone, criticize someone without sounding like an a-hole? Curious to see your guys' uh, thoughts on that. Uh, wish you nothing but the best. Appreciate you more than you know. Catch you on the flippity flip.